J Israel, J Israel. <laughs> My people, I just want to analyze one small thing before I will let the video play. When I remember when J Israel come to talk about charlatans and wait to really blow the internet then, now when he talk about Aflukao, when he come talk say that resurrection, where you do, now fake. When I remember, then when he come to talk say, if they know that they get power, well, well, why be say that they use um, hand sanitizer after they clean and during the COVID time, you know, when I remember that stuff, we go around the internet. Right now, now. It don't come out. Can't talk one thing. I'm just a bit confused. I maybe probably can clarify this one. I don't know. Because I remember before it starts, they call them charlatans. They say it was near death when God saved them. And because of that, it now came up with um back to Christ movement, you know, to begin to expose fake prophets and all that. So that was the calling based on the fact that God spared his life because it was near death. So when he can later God give him a second chance, then he can realize, it, say yes, he no need to keep quiet. He need to expose this pastors and i know say he talk about a lot of pastors so jeremiah was one of them um chris okafo was one of them and um, uh, a lot of them tb joshua late tb joshua all of them he just talking you know we get favorite one he said they are all charlatans now right now wait he can't really confuse me i be safe waiting go talk for jeremiah church he can talk say he was also near death the second time when he couldn't really rest the peace people couldn't would talk i don't remember when the jesus was going around that jesus was dead like some months ago say he never died but he was actually reading his uh, rest in peace comment that people were dropping for him you know and the insult where people where he say people couldn't drop they give him so when in the analyze within the talk so for church, he can talk once way can make me confused. He say it was also near death again. The second time, say God can tell him, say make you go make peace with me when doing insult. That God gave him a second chance. Okay. The first time God gave you a second chance. This other time again, I think you're gonna be third chance now, be but he say second chance again. So I'm a bit confused. Like, um, so the first time you were near death and God told you to um expose the charlatans and he gave you the word charlatan because we actually heard the word the first that name from your mouth and the second time god told you to make peace with the same charlatans he asked you to expose so j israel I, we don't really know because i remember that time you just see j israel then when you go there on life like for a page think up to ten thousand people would just be watching at the time it, it really engaged um the people it was so interesting it can't be like in a battle but for me personally i didn't like it because if you just the way he's doing now this is the right part and this is what he should have done many years ago and not trying to expose what he has been part of his system he has been part of you know you'd have just like keep quiet and let the bygone bygone and start your own preaching in the way god has directed it but nevertheless i'll just let the video play we're gonna watch our mom tonight j israel from south africa okay well, now bye bye Papa Jay, when God appeared to prophet Jeremiah and he was giving him an assignment and a message for Mercy City, nobody else was there. It was only him in the secret place. Now it is stupidity and foolishness in his highest order to come and argue with an encounter that he had in his secret place because there was no witness or supporter and there was no cheerleader who was cheering him as God was talking to him in the secret place. God has called different people in different ways. And he has given people different encounters in different secret places. I'm here only for one thing. Just to say to somebody under the sound of my voice today. You can never help God. And God does not need your help at any point. I'm not speaking from a place of theory, but I'm speaking from a place of practicality. I'm speaking from a place of experience where I have personally went through a phase and a journey in life where I thought helping God is something that exists. You can never help God and win. For God does not need anybody's help. The Bible says God will never, God does not do anything 
unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. There is nowhere in the scripture where it says God will never do anything unless he reveals this to his servants, the journalists, to his servants, the bloggers, to his servants, social media people. There is nowhere in the scripture where it says that. I have said a lot of things. I'm sure most of you who are here and some of you are probably watching online are very much aware of a lot of things that I have personally said. I don't want to talk about anybody else, but I want to talk about Papa J, Prophet Jeremiah. I've said a lot of things against him. I've said a lot of things. And unfortunately, everything that I said was not because I know him personally. Everything that I said was not because I had an encounter with him at personal level. But it is unfortunate to say that most of the things that I said on the internet were coming from people who are close to you. This is my first time to be in Mercy City. This is my first time to be in Delta State. This is my first time to be in Wari. I never thought at any point I'd be in this place or I'd be in this state. But there is a fire that was burning within me. It was like fire shattered in my bones. I couldn't contain it. I couldn't contain it within me. That is why I felt the need to come and be in this place so that I may share whatever that I have to share. Like I said, it's my first time to be here. And it's highly unfortunate that most of the things that are still being peddled on the internet today by certain bloggers that I'm not going to mention their names because we don't want to give them the clout. Most of the things that they peddle on the internet and most of the things that they say online are actually things that come from within the camp and they are things that come from those who are close to the prophet of God. Now, allow me to say, Prophet Jeremiah, Omoto Fufain, Papa J. I arrived here on Friday, there's Friday. I arrived here on Friday. And then on Saturday, yesterday, I attended the prayer mountain. I just wish all the bloggers and all the journalists can come and have the first-hand experience that I had yesterday, it will change their minds. I saw God in this place yesterday. I felt the presence of God in this place yesterday. And even today as I'm here, I'm not saying what I'm saying because I'm under duress. I'm not saying what I'm saying because... I'm looking for favor or anything. I'm saying what I'm saying because I believe it is going to clear my conscience. But I'm, allow me to reiterate to say there are people that the devil has planted in this commission and the devil has brought them very close to the prophet and these are the same people who are bringing destruction to the ministry these are the same people who are bringing confusion to this commission. I know that within now and the next few weeks or the next few months, as the Lord wills, God is going to pick them out one after the other. It is very disheartening 
to know that the one that Jesus brought the closest, the one that Jesus trusted with his money, was the one that the devil used the most. It is mostly those that dine at the table with Jesus that will bring the most betrayal. I pray today that may God expose everyone who is planted by the devil, by the enemy, to bring destruction, to bring disorder to this commission in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say this before I sit down. It is very dangerous to open your mouth and speak against anybody who says he is from God. Now I'm going to explain why I'm saying who says. The reason why I'm saying who says is because you were not there when God was talking to him. You were not there when whoever called him was talking to him. A couple of weeks or a month, a couple of months ago, I fell sick. I was admitted in the hospital and there were news that broke on the internet that um, That even myself, I began to see those who were just saying we love you by their mouths. Because the day that, have you ever read your own condolence messages when you are still alive? If you have never read your own rest in peace messages, you will never understand why I am standing here today. If you have never read a message on your own WhatsApp phone where somebody is saying, it is unfortunate that you have died. May your soul rot in hell. On your WhatsApp, it is unfortunate. And you realize these are people that I know. I had a wake-up call on that day. I had what is called a near-death experience. I believe God gave me a second chance. And the second chance that God gave me he clearly said to me, go back. I have called you for my work. But before you can preach to anybody, go back and correct everything that you have ever said and correct everything that you have ever spoken with your mouth against my servants. Now many people will never understand this, but personally because I know that this is a personal encounter that I had with God, I need no approval from anybody to say the things that I'm saying. But I came all the way from South Africa to say to Papa J, Prophet Jeremiah Omoto Fufain, I stand before you today. With all humility, I stand before you today. I don't have enough words to express how much my heart feels that I'm standing in front of you today and you have given me an opportunity just to stand before you. Even if I can die after this, I don't mind. Because I know that my part is done and I will go and be with my father in heaven knowing that my heart is clean. I am here today to say to you I am deeply, sincerely sorry. And I apologize for everything that I said against you. And I am here to ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Maturity is not only displayed by obvious ways, but maturity is also displayed 
when you realize that you are wrong and you don't only realize that you are wrong but you take a step of faith when i first reached out to prophet jeremiah i did not know whether he was willing to talk to me or he was not but something was pushing me and i said to him on the phone when i was in south africa i said please accept my apologies and i'm willing to do whatever it takes just for you to speak because i believe that when you speak just your word only to say you have forgiven me is enough for my entire life to be fixed and for everything in my life to be solved papa j i humble myself before you today and i apologize for everything that I said I believe it was during my days of ignorance and I'm asking for your forgiveness I know many people across the world will never understand this but it is between me and my God And I also want to say to everybody who's here and everybody who's watching across the world, join me also if you have ever said anything against Papa J, against any servant of God anywhere in this world. Maybe God has just afforded you as well this opportunity for you to make it right with his servants Papa J I met your mercy I met your mercy God bless you. You may be seated. 